See you tomorrow? Six o'clock? Fine. Pick me up here. I see. Excuse me. Could you possibly help? My wife's been taken ill. Oh, would you like to ring for a doctor? I live here. Thank you. But could you just look at her first, please? I'm so worried. government has its Secret Service branch. America, at CIA, France, Desi M. Bureau, England, MI5. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. A call came through from Hardy at half past one in the morning. His mother opened the door. Oh, yes, he had a mother. I'd always thought he'd been found under a file in the foreign office. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Hardy. Good evening, Mr. Drake. This is a most unusual hour to come calling. It's not fair waking my boy from his... Mother, please. Good evening, Hardy. Thank you very much, Mrs. Good Hardy. It's a very fetching robe, if I may say so, Mr. Hardy. Yes. Come on, let's get down to business. We've got a complete dossier of the father, Patrick Lawrence. Uh, thermodynamics, yes? Yes, that's the man. Graduate of McGill University, Montreal, an industrial designer. He's head of the Lawrence Group. First wife died 12 years ago. They had this one daughter, Sally. She's 15 now. Married his present wife 11 years ago. They have no children. Her name is Noel. Hmm. How many people know about the kidnapping? Four. You, me, the father, and the stepmother. Thanks very much. Police? No, not yet. Only you. I think Lawrence is afraid once the police get hold of it, he'll never see Sally alive again. He may be right. Right or wrong, that's the way we play it. Meaning? Hmm. Lawrence won't cooperate. We use the police as a final persuader. So you think that the kidnappers want something more than money? Yes. We have a very good reason for making Lawrence toe the line. He has immediate access to all the secret files in his organization. They have vital government contracts. And Sally's life? The daughter is not our principal concern. You're a cold fish, Mr. Hardy, aren't you? I try to be. Well, what is our principal concern? Lawrence, and the terms he makes for the safe return of his daughter. What of the stepmother? She's intelligent enough for a woman. Hmm. By the way, she left Lawrence a month ago. She took the stepdaughter with her. Here are some photographs. Hmm. Well, they um, grow up quickly these days, don't they? Well, those were taken six weeks ago. No photographs of Lawrence? Well, not for the last seven years. What, none at all? Not since the accident. It was touch and go with them, you know, for about a year. He managed to survive, part of him. His legs were smashed. He'd never walk again. His face was scarred. Well, that's why there are no photographs. Exactly. Very few people today know what he looks like. He won't even go out. He hasn't left that penthouse of his in all this time. Mm, a bit of a hermit, eh? will not anybody near him. Except the daughter. She's the one person in the world he cares about. All right, Mr. Hardy, my compliments to your mother and apologies for waking her at this unholy hour. I'll uh, see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. I left Hardy to catch his beauty sleep and went down to the embankment to Lawrence House. Patrick Lawrence lived in the penthouse above the London offices of his organization. He had his own private entrance, the hallmark of success. Good evening, sir. Ah, good evening. Uh, my name is Drake. Mr. Lawrence is expecting me. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Yes? Uh, Mr. Drake wishes to come up. No, he does, does he? Well, if he has to. This way, sir. Thank you. Hardy's picture of Lawrence had me worried. The obsessive love he cherished for Sally, his only child, could be dangerous. In his eagerness to come to terms with the kidnappers, he could be the cause of her death. Once they'd been paid off, they'd be eager to kill the only witness to their crime. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Mr. Lawrence is waiting. Thank you very much. Mr. 
Mr. Drake, sir. You have 30 seconds to say your piece, Mr. Drake, and then you can get out. What I have to say, Mr. Lawrence, may take a little longer than that. 30 seconds. I only tolerate your presence now out of respect for Hardy. But even that has its limits. I prefer to wait for Mrs. Lawrence as arranged. My wife no longer has any choice in the matter. She will do exactly as I say. If it hadn't been for her, this would... There will be no interference from anyone whilst the life of my daughter is in danger. From no one, Mr. Drake. So you're here at last. Mr. Drake, this is my wife. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Lawrence? Good evening. Mr. Drake is a close friend of Hardy's. Police? No, not police. Nothing so mundane. A security agent, no less. And if we're to believe Hardy, a man of inestimable experience in situations such as this, a common occurrence in his life, kidnapping. Only not in ours, Mr. Drake. I think I can help if you let me, Mrs. Lawrence. Hardy had no right to bring you into this. He had every right. You see, my chief concern is your daughter's safety. How reassuring to hear that from you, Drake. And of course, if it were a matter of security or my daughter's life, my daughter would come first, I suppose. Is it so impossible for you to come immediately? There you are, Fordyce. Oh, yes. Thank you. All right, Fordyce, you can go. Well, thank you, sir, but I have to wait for them. Wait for them? What are you talking about? Mr. Hardy told me I had to return the drawings after you'd finished with them. Oh, he did, did he? Well, you can tell Mr. Hardy he's getting too big for his britches. All right, now you can get out. Will you please telephone Mr. Hardy, sir? No, I will not. He's not on my payroll and he's not going to run my business. Caldwell, please show Mr. Fordyce to the elevator. Why haven't we heard from them? You will when they're ready. Mrs. Lawrence, I think you ought to persuade your husband that he needs my help. Why should I? Because of the... Uh, the handicap he's under in any deal he makes with them. I must be a part of that deal. You're too late. I phoned my husband on the way here. He'd already come to terms with them. And you're prepared to let him go ahead? To risk Sally's life? No. No, of course not. Your husband is in no condition to protect Sally, or himself for that matter, once they've got what they want. But they wouldn't harm Sally. Uh, once my husband had paid them, would they? I wouldn't gamble on that. Not if my child's life was at stake. They wouldn't really hurt her, would they? I mean, they, they couldn't. No, not yet. The real danger comes when they've been paid off. It's going to be all right. The money is here now. We need detain you no longer, Mr. Drake. I want him to stay. Well, I don't. Good night, Mr. Drake. No, please stay. You think because I sit in this chair, I can't protect my own child when the time comes? I want Mr. Drake to stay. I say good night, Mr. Drake. If I go, I shall have to inform the police. No, I won't let you do this, Patrick. She's my daughter just as much as she is yours. Your daughter? I love her as if she were my own. If you hadn't taken her away, this would never have happened. I could have protected Sally here, never let her out of my sight, been with me all the time here. She's your daughter, Patrick, not your prisoner. You think I can ever forget that? Mr. Lawrence, you, uh, you say that you have the money here? Yes, Mr. Drake. I'm ready for them. You realize that Sally is a witness. Are you certain you'll be able to protect her after you've paid them off? You mean because of this? You interfere any more in my affairs, Mr. Drake, and you'll soon discover that... You're early. Hello? Yes, speaking. I have it in my possession now. Yes, everything. But before I... Hello. 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 They hung up on me. How dare they? I was going to demand that this is not a good time for you to make demands, Mr. Lawrence. How 
long must we go on like this, not knowing if she... As long as it suits them. They're in no hurry to come to terms. They have Sally, you see. But my husband has already agreed This is not a simple game they're playing, Mrs. Lawrence. They, they make their own rules. We merely obey them until someone slips up. And what about Sally? What, are you still here? Yes? It's for you. Oh, Drake speaking. We're on to Lawrence, in terms of the ransom. It's not money. That would be too simple, wouldn't it? The set of drawings, the complete failure of the Columbia Thermodynamic Reactor Project, were drawn out of security vaults an hour ago. They were taken by Fordyce, one of Lawrence's assistants. Of course, he's entitled to them or anything else in the security vaults. But why does he want them at this time? I'm obliged. Mr. Hardy doesn't think there'll be any further contact this evening. Oh? And how does he know? You look tired, and I'll go to bed. I couldn't sleep if I did. I'm going to my room. I'll put the phone through there. You mind, Mr. Drake. Of course I. Good night, Mr. Lawrence. Good night to you. The phone rang three times during the next two hours in Lawrence's room. The calls were short. After a while, the night was silent, and the city slept. Can't let you do this, Mr. Lawrence. Leave us alone. By what authority do you deny a father the right to save his own child? In this case, by the terms of the ransom. The amount of money concerns no one but me. If it were only money, Mr. Lawrence. What else could it be? Perhaps I could... Oh, you have no right to do that. I demand that you give them back. I demand it. They're my designs. I can do what I like with them. They're mine. Yes, they're yours. They're your designs, Mr. Lawrence. But now they belong to the state. But you don't understand, Mr. Drake. This is for Sally, my daughter. to see your little girl again, Lawrence. You'd better listen carefully. You will leave the apartment in exactly five minutes' time. Your wife will wheel you along the embankment. Just keep moving. We will contact you where we are sure you are not being followed. The wheelchair was no sooner on its way than an ambulance pulled in alongside. They bundled their victims into the back and drove for an hour, twisting and turning endlessly. <laughs> Mind my leg. What do you think I am, a sack of coal? All right, another TV set. Now, this is the place, is it? All right. What are you hanging about for? Come on, take me inside. That's it. All right. What's the matter? Are you frightened? Come on, let's get on with it. Inside the hall, streamers and Halloween masks of a long-forgotten party, moldering in the dust. That's your fun. Now, come on, stop playing games. We're not in fret. Come on in there. Come on. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bogeyman. Let's have some lights in here. No light, Mr. Lawrence. You may be a millionaire, but you're not throwing your weight around in here. Where's my daughter? Search him. Now, you be careful with that. I'm going to need it. Oh, you be careful. No one sees my scars, my friend. Anyway, you don't need to be frightened of a sick man in a wheelchair, do you? Oh. 
to see my daughter. Where is she? Right away. We want the drawings, sir. No, no, no. You don't get a thing until my wife and daughter are safe at home. You didn't bring the drawings? No, I didn't. We warned you what would happen if you didn't do what you were told. Why didn't you bring them? All right. I brought them. In here. And uh, here's my drawing board. Now, here are my terms. You, first. You're not making any terms, Mr. Lawrence. You're going to do what you are told. Well, it's going to be very difficult for us, isn't it? You want the drawings, I want my wife and child taken home. Now, as soon as they're safe, I start drawing. I can't do that. I must have the drawings first. So, you have no authority to make a deal. You're not as big as you'd like us to believe. Young man, I'm wasting my time in talking to you. Who's paying you? Well, let me speak to him. Hello? Yes, he's here. And his wife. No, he didn't bring them. Hey, you better talk to him. Oh, come on. Lawrence here. Listen, I've been trying to explain to your delinquent boy that you don't get anything until I know my wife and child are safe at home. You didn't bring the drawings. You may not see your daughter again, Mr. Lawrence. That's right. As soon as you have those drawings, there's nothing to stop you cutting our throats, is there? Now listen, I have the tools of my trade right here. I start drawing as soon as I know that my wife and child are safe. You are in no position to make demands, Mr. Lawrence. If you want my secrets, then I am. Now come on, make up your mind. Once they're safe, there's nothing to stop you coming to terms with a crippled man in a wheelchair, is there? Very well, Mr. Lawrence. It's a deal. One other thing. I've arranged a special television transmission. I don't do a thing until I see my child on the screen. You seem to forget that transmission closed down hours ago. You seem to forget that I'm Patrick Lawrence. All right, Mr. Patrick Lawrence. Give me my man again. All right, he wants you. Hello? Yes. If you say so. Fetch her down. Be careful. She may not catch on. Sure. I'll be expecting you. You wait here. So the big boy's coming over himself, is he? And you'd better deliver. Hello, Sally. Oh, no. Never mind what they said. We found you. We came to find you. We're together again now, the three of us. Say hello to your father, Sally. Please, say hello to your father. It's all right, Sally. You heard what your mother said. They're going to take you home now. I'll be along later. Goodbye now. Take him back to town in the ambulance. Blindfold them. Good luck. Are you uh, expecting trouble? No. Well, sit down and relax. I'm not going anywhere. That's for sure. Do you always pick the easy ones? Easy? Holding a gun on a man in a wheelchair. Wouldn't you call that easy? I've had them easier. Babysitting? Now look, you just keep quiet and we get along fine. What would you do if I started to make trouble? Now just calm down. Would you hit me? Hit a man in a wheelchair? Shut up! But if I got rough, you'd have to hit me, wouldn't you? Don't be a fool. I don't want to hurt you. Why not? You've hurt people before, haven't you? Plenty of people. Is it because my legs are smashed? Ah, forget it, I said! I wasn't going to hurt you. Oh, you're quite the little gentleman, aren't you? Aren't you? Uh, how did you start in this life of crime, my friend? Was it because you were misunderstood by the world? Oh, was it? Oh, no. You're not going to shoot me. Keep back! You can't fool me, sonny boy. If you pull that trigger, you're going to be in real trouble with your friends, aren't you? You kill me, and you kill their deal, don't you?
Yes. Philip Lawrence, Drake here. Your wife and child are all right. I got them to agree to the television transmission. Well, thank you, Drake. I'll never be able to repay you. Now, look, call Hardy the minute I finish talking to you. Hardy is here with me now. Where are you? I don't know. They brought me in the back of a closed ambulance. Well, how'd you get to the phone? The end left only one guard. Uh, he's taking a nap. The top man will be due here any minute. Now, don't be a fool, Drake. Get out of the house right away. When they find you can't deliver, they'll kill you. I can't. If they find the place empty when they arrive, they'll go straight after Sally. I'm staying right here till I see her on the TV screen. Now, look here, Drake. No time to chatter now. They're here. <laughs> Like this. Let me out. Break it down. Ah. So you're the principal in this business. Now look at right, no all right. Well, what's happened to the man who was guarding you? I well, don't know. No. There was a phone call. He went out, locked the door, hasn't come back. You've got no all right, right to lock I me said. up like this. Take a look. Here, you, just a minute. Switch on that set. Huh? Come on, switch it on. I don't want to miss them. Come on, plug it in and switch it on. Leave him! Do as he says. Now, Mr. Lawrence, what about these plans? It's time you started drawing. Uh -huh. Not until I see my little girl on the television. You know, if I don't see them on that screen, you won't get anything out of me. Don't worry, my friend. We won't have any trouble making you do what we want. All right, there you are. Now start drawing. What makes you think that I'm going to give away my country's secrets? I've kept my part of the bargain, Mr. Norris. I'm waiting for you to keep yours. I hope you realize that it may take hours to do these drawings properly, even a day, perhaps two. We have plenty of time. Just get started. No. Oh. He's nowhere about. He'll be back. Now, Mr. Lawrence, let's forget the heroic, shall we? You may have been tough once, but you've got soft sitting in that chair. We'll see. Look, I don't care about violence, Mr. Lawrence, but if there's no other way... You could kill me and still get nothing out of it, you know. All right. <clears throat> All right. Set up the drawing board. Where is it? It's here. You see, I told you, you got soft sitting in that chair. Yes, that's right. Here, here, give me that. You got it the wrong way around. Look, you're supposed to put... See that coal down there? You're supposed to put this... <laughs> that was a very silly thing to do, Mr. Lawrence. You know you want to watch that temper of yours. Oh, I don't like having to do this, but we're going to settle here now. Who is the master? It suits me. <laughs> Mr. Drake, we can never thank you enough for all you've done for us. Well, it's time I was on my way. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Drake, I forgot to buy. <laughs> sure, you don't want my car to drive you to the station. Oh, no, thanks. Time I went back to being myself. It'd be nice if everything were that simple. Take back everything. Forget it as though it had never been said. Come on, Mr. Drake, I'll be late for Jimmy. And where do you think you're going, young lady? But he's driving up from the country. 176 miles since 4 o'clock this morning. Now look here, miss, I'm not going to... All right, run along. Goodbye, darling. Back. Uh, Come right. on, Mr. Drake, we'll be... Bye. Right. 